Hi, I'm Debbie, and this is The Book Ponderer. Thank you for stopping by for another video. Today, I'm going to try doing something different. I have been collecting, well, I do collect ideas all the time, as most of us do. Um, things come to us, we write it down, maybe we like it later, maybe we don't. So I was looking through my list of ideas. One idea I had was called Why I Read. And I just have a list of different things, and so... I haven't really prepped for this at all. So I'm just going to go through and then try to think of a book for each one of those things. I hope that makes sense. We'll see. I don't, I don't even know if I'll be able to think of books off the top of my head, but here we go. So one of the reasons why I read is to connect with others and remind myself of humanness. So I think what I mean by this is like to empathize with other people, right? To feel... The things that other people feel and the book that comes right off the top I'm just gonna throw the first book that comes off the top of my head right so Snowflower and the Secret Fan is one of those books where I remember the scenes of the main character as a little girl and the foot binding like the pain of her walking and the broken toes and her sister I think or something like of all the things in that book, I mean, I think that is what I remember. I remember just feeling that. I think of the book thief where I was Liesl sneaking into the library and taking the laundry around the town and hiding the guy in the basement and going to read to him. And, you know, that connection with fictional characters, but they're not just fictional characters. They are other people. And I think only true book nerds, people watching vi this video, really truly understand what I mean when I say that, that within this fictional world of books, I find humanness, I find kindness, I find other people who feel things that I feel and who see the world the way I see it or see it differently than I see it. And help me along on that path and that journey. And even though it is fictional and it doesn't really exist, it does. It came from someone's mind. And that is why sometimes I say when I read a book and I'm very disturbed by the author's mind that wrote the book, I can't do it. But then there are books like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo where I read that and I go, here is an author who, regardless of whether I ever read another one of her books or I like any of her other books, here is an author who gets it, who has created real people who help me, who bond with me, who connect with me, and I feel more connected to the world and to kindness and to love than I did before I read that book. So yeah. So another thing that I read is to learn. And I've talked about several books recently where I learned all kinds of amazing things like that book Flavor that was all about taste or even the, who would have thought I would have read Scream, which is all about the science of fear and things like that. And now I'm reading about jellyfish. Um, I'm also reading The Toy Makers, which is about um, making toys and, and these this family sort of who makes toys and there's some amazing things. Hopefully I will finish that and be able to talk about that. Some amazing things in that book. But um, I also have been keeping a list of things where I talk about things I've learned. Like one of the things I learned this year, I'll just give you one. One thing I learned this year from a book was, and I forget which book it was. I'll put it up um, because I can't, I just can't remember the title. But it was it was one of the books I read earlier this year that was about India and there is a line in there where the girl says something about soup being too hot her um, her to eat that her emotions sort of fired up within her and her emotions she couldn't talk about something right then because it was like the soup that was too hot to eat she had to let them cool down before she could process it, eat it, go through it. And to me, that was something that really, like, captured me, that, that came to life for me 
I was able to see that because I often have emotional flare-ups and as you get older girls and go through menopause and things like that, it will happen to you more and more. Um, where you just have these sort of like emotional outbursts and your emotions flare. I've always been sort of quick tempered like that. And you know, it's just this sort of blinding flash that happens. And the idea that I could let that cool down or like a match, you know, fizz out a little bit before processing those emotions really helped me a lot. The book, the book, the gift of rain also taught me something very similar with the whole idea that I've talked about before of taking, not confronting things head on and taking that energy and pushing it back in a different way. I'm still working on that, but I'm getting better. I am getting way better with that. So some of the other things that um, are reasons why I read, because I have a list over here. That's why I keep looking over here. I read to suffer and to feel. And so sort of, this is sort of like connecting with others, but I like the safety of suffering in a book. And I don't know how to explain that, but it's like, I'm fortunate. I have a pretty happy life. Like, I'm happy. I have been happy for many, many, many years. And while there are things that make me sad or frustrated or angry or whatever, in general, I'm just pretty happy. I am very fortunate to have a lovely wife who I love very much. I have a good family. I have my basic needs met. Life is good. And there is something about safely exploring pain and, and heartbreak and suffering through a character in a book that I believe for me, and I don't know this, I'm not like encouraging other people to try this, but for me, I think that it sort of helps me not only empathize with other people, but process things in my life and move further along some sort of journey. And I, you know, I'm not a highly spiritual person. I'm sure that there's some spiritual pathway or something that could be like alluded to here. But for me, it really is just sort of edging up on being a better person for lack of a better way to explain it, like to dig through things that are hard and things that are hurt and to know that you can make it through it and to know that life can be good on the other side or to know that it had value and wisdom, even if we have to sort of artificially apply it to it later, but good things can come out of bad things. And so, um, some of those books are a lot of the same books that I've already talked about, you know, and, um, one of those books is When They Call You a Terrorist. And now that book is not fictional, but it made me feel, it made me cry. It made me explore something outside of my comfort zone and to suffer in a way that was like empathizing with the people in the, in the story, but also it allowed me to grieve in a way that was safe. And I don't know how to explain that other than to say when I'm reading, it's me and my book and I can cry or not cry or be heartbroken or not heartbroken. And it's okay. However I feel is okay. And I think in processing those emotions, sometimes I, you know, I'm very analytical. I analyze my own reactions to things. Like I just react and then I go, why did I do that? <laughs> Cause that's me. That's probably a lot of you. Um, and you know, I think that's one of the things I like about reading because it allows me to react and then see my reaction and then try to understand, well, why did I react like this? And do I always react like this? Or was it just this book? And what's different about this book? And I clearly analyze myself way too often. But anyway, so the, one of the other big things for me in books of why I read is hope. And I've talked about this some already. Um, I'm just going to talk about it again because why not? One of the big things that I really love in books 
is when you have characters who are faced with something out of their comfort zone, whether it be a war or a tragic circumstance or an accident or um, immigrating to another country, um, you know, even a kid going off to college. I mean, anything that takes you out of your comfort zone and puts you somewhere else in a different environment with different people or the same people under different circumstances, but puts you in some different element. That's why I love dystopian fiction, right? It's, it's like inherently set up that everything is about to change. And so I like to see how people react. And I like books that explore that from a place of like darkness to light. So things are okay. Something bad happens. These great people are taken down to the depths of pain and suffering and whatever. And they have to find a way to bring themselves back up out of it. And it's the bringing up out of it part that really is the critical element for me because that is where the hope comes from. The idea that no matter what happens, we, and I mean we as in the whole species, are going to find a way to make it through. It may be horrible. We may lose a lot of people. We may lose parts of ourselves. We may wish we hadn't made it. But we can come out on the other side and ideally, the stories I like to read, find a way to get back to a new normal. And maybe it will never be the same again, but it can be good. And that's what I like to read, that, that a good life can come after bad things have happened. And I love that setup over and over again in all its many different forms of how you find hope. How do different people... And this is, this is what, like, sometimes when we have the same story that we read over and over again, and by story, I mean here, this idea of something happening, going down, and somebody finding their way back up for me, I read this story over and over in all kinds of ways. And I think the reason is because it's all different stories, and it's different characters, and it's different people, and they have different quirks and different strengths and different ways of doing it and they come out on the other side different people and I see over and over again all the different ways there is to make it all the different ways there is to be happy all the different ways there is to help other people to bond with other people to lend assistance to be smart to be crafty to be creative to rely on yourself and to know that you have more strength than you give yourself credit for. And I love that message. I love the idea of that. And ideally, I like to read books where the author doesn't even really know that they're writing that story. They're just writing a really good story. And that happens to be the message that I take out of it. Those are the best books to me. So I'm going to go ahead and end this here. I would love to know why you read. What are some of the books that illustrate it for you? Maybe if you like this, I have a whole list of other things I could even prepare and come back with it. Let's not kill ourselves. I'm not really going to prepare, but you know, we can think about it more and then come back and talk about it again with other things of why I read. So thank you for stopping by and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.